Carlo, I've been obsessed with understanding existence, all reality, and, and the way I proceed is to try to make a, a taxonomy, a structure of things that I, I at least I can understand the, the, the totality. I want to grasp as much as possible. I may not know how they all fit together, but I just want to know what, the, what all the categories are. So when we're dealing with existence and reality, I want to get to the most fundamental level and ask at that fundamental level, most fundamental, what are the different kinds of things that exist? Um, exist is a, what exists is a wonderful question and is a wonderfully ambiguous question. Okay. Um, because uh, um, I think the interesting part is not the what is exist. Namely, um, by exist, uh, uh, by real, by there is, uh, we mean all sorts of diff different things, depending on the context, right? Um, does uh, Hamlet, Prince of Denmark, exist? Of course it exists, right? This is the main character of a, sh a wonderful Shakespeare play. Uh, of course it doesn't exist, it's just a character in a play, it's not, it's not real. Uh, which one is true? Both, <laughs> okay? It's just two different meanings of, yeah. uh, of exist. Mm -hmm. Does Pinocchio exist? Does my, does my, uh, I, I, I had a dream and uh, there was a, a, a flying horse. Mm -hmm. Okay, is it real? Yeah, of course it's real. <laughs> I had a dream and there was a flying horse. I mean, it, no, there are no flying horse. Flying horse don't exist. Yes, they do exist. So, depending on what you mean, by, what we mean by existence, um, we may label something as existing or non-existing. And a lot of discussion uh, about what exists and what doesn't exist, uh, it's only about, you know, mm, people using existing in different, in different manners. Okay, but we, we, we can do a hierarchy, like we look at a tree, uh, does the tree exist? Of course it exists, but it's not fundamental. Then you go to the wood, and you go to the molecules, and go to the atom. Exactly. And then, you know, when we get down to some, fun, the most fundamental level, something is there that we can say is a category. Right. So if we go, um, if we take this route, and uh, um, we want to make a, a list of the fundamental things that exist, yeah. in the sense yeah. that everything else, maybe in a horrendously complicated way, can be thought as a combination of these things. Exactly. So, uh, then we don't. We, we're not going to say chairs exist. We're not going to say Robert exists. We're not going to say trees exist. Um, and we although I might say that that a Robert or a Carlo. Um, some people would argue have a, a different kind of existence and the difference between a chair and a, a, a table because we're the, you're dealing with a different category. Certainly the physical body is the same the kind of stuff, but when you're dealing with a, uh, a sentience, some people would say that now you're bringing in a different category. But, but let, let's, let's go beyond that, but I didn't want to let that pass. Yeah, we can come back to this. Um, we can reduce things in different manners. Some f philosopher in phenomenology will say, oh, I want to reduce everything to my phenomenological yeah, yeah. way of perceiving right. things. That's one way of reducing things. Okay? But then a chair exists because I perceive a chair. Okay? And then you exist because I perceive you. Okay. I myself exist because I perceive myself. But if you take a perspective of a physicist trying to understand yeah. uh, uh, what are the ingredients? I would say that a chair is a combination of things, and, uh, and uh, of course, a, a watch is a more complicated combination of things because it moves in mm. measure times. So you are an even more complicated thing. Hopefully, but um, everything turned out, uh, and I think this is a surprise of modern science. Uh, uh, we have looked into things, searching for something else, uh, but we haven't found anything else uh, beyond, uh, besides uh, fields particles, space and time, but then particles turn out to be excitation of fields and space, space and, and time, time turn to be a fields also. <laughs> right. And uh, so fields are quantum fields. So at present we do have a, not totally convincing because there are some, a lot of technicalities uh, that don't work well, but we have a picture of the elementary ingredients of reality which are just quantum fields. And we know the list of these fields. The Dirac fields, the Young Mill fields, the gravitational fields, and maybe the Higgs fields, and basically that's it. As far as we know, everything is made by these things. And if quantum field, uh, it's not, it's not stuff in the sense of uh, water or wood. Right, yeah. uh, it's a complicated happening of quantum events, uh, but it can be described mathematically. We sort of know how to deal with it. So I would say, from this perspective, uh, uh, that's what exists. Uh, but it's a very 
specific perspective. Then, of course, uh, my shirt also exists, the red exists, uh, the numbers different, exist. different levels of hierarchy, you have different combinations which have yes. existence at their own level. But yes. And you can do that at yes. infinitum. But let's stay at the, at the basic level. So we yes. have quantum fields, you know, four, however many there may be. Uh, some people say that those may be um, derivative from something more fundamental, yes. string theory and other mechanisms that uh, give rise to these quantum fields. Yes, I mean, string theory, I would bring it into the same framework as well. I mean, it's just a compl more complicated version of that. It's still a quantum theory, and it's still some, some sort of more complicated version of a, of a, of a field theory. It's still uh, something whose main excitations are either particles or strings or membranes. And uh, in uh, loop quantum gravity, which I think is a more radical step, uh, um, space and time, what we call space and time themselves, are is a quantum field, right? So it's also made like quanta, small quanta. You know, the beauty of quantum fields is that um, they have a field-like character, they're diffused, uh, but they're quantum. And so yeah. when you interact with this, they behave granularly. Yeah. That's why matter is made by atoms, by uh, protons, electrons, yeah. uh, quarks. Particles, so particles are equitations of field, and space itself, because of quantum mechanics, I believe, is uh, has a granular structure. This is the key inside of loop quantum gravity. And, so and it's the same that, that's kind of That's controversial, obviously, and and time as well. And so time, time well. comes in little time quanta, well. like everything else, at a very uh, that's small right. Planck level. Or that's right. That's right. And so, so ju just to uh, clarify that for so, so space and time, ha how big are the quanta in space? Ten to the minus. 40, 10 to the minus 33, 33 which okay, means uh, very small. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, compared to the Planck length, it seems really large. How about time? 10 to the minus 44 seconds. Okay, so is very small, much smaller than anything we can uh, hope uh, to measure uh, okay, uh, very good. right now. All right, so, so this is one way of thinking about it. Now let me, let me just throw out to you some other kinds of stuff that are in the universe and see how they relate to the yeah. quantum fields, such as uh, events. Uh, that uh, and the change of events that occurs within is is that a fundamental thing? Is that just a derivative of your quantum fields, or is that something that has sort of an independent existence? That's one. I'm gonna give you give you a few of these. Another are abstract objects, um, mathematics, sets, logic, all sorts of things. Universals, we say. You know, is there such a thing? Uh, and if so, is that a, another way to classify? the totality of existence because certainly abstract objects are not derivative from quantum fields um, let me separate the, yeah, yeah. the 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 answer um, as far as events are concerned uh, I think that we do understand quantum fields in terms of events uh, quantum fields uh, manifest itself as a sequence of events um, a photon it's a, a photon that arrives somewhere, this light arrives at me and the photon strikes here. That's what the quantum field is, is the arriving of the photon, mm -hmm. which is a discrete quantum event. So uh, quantum events are part of the story in which we understand quantum fields. Uh, much more complicated is the answer to your second question. I mean, what about abstract objects? Um, again, I would go back to the uh, ambiguity of to, the verb to exist. Um, there is a possibility of using it in the large possible manner, which is uh, Quine. Uh, Quine mm -hmm. defines existence as right. so something basically uh, you can quantify upon, you can, you can talk about. <laughs> you say <laughs> yeah, yeah, this yeah. is uh, right. uh, about it, or there is one of this. Um, namely, he tries to read existence from our language. Everything we, there is a, a, a sort of uh, 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 linguistic definition of, of existence. Ex everything we talk about exists because we're talking mm -hmm. about it, right? Um, I think this is fine, but it's just a, a use of existence very large. And then everything comes in. We can put all sorts of stuff in. Yeah, but so the point is, what is fun if, if we do that, what, uh, what is fundamental? What, what, yeah. I think uh, one mistake that we commonly do, and uh, that creates a lot of uh, uh, philosophical confusion, is that uh, uh, we use language for talking about things, for naming action, naming yeah, yeah. things we do, naming the logic we use. Uh, and then uh, we 
take the name that we use as entities. And then we ask, where are these entities? Okay. I count things. Okay. It's one, two. Okay. So two. I said two. So what is two? Where is two? Two is not in space time. So there's an entity which is two, which is where? And then we get confused. Two is an entity, but it's not in space, it's not in time, it's not in phase, where it is. So what you would be saying it's not, then, which it's is just my count. It's which just is a, a position, it's a, a deflationary approach to abstract objects, which says that abstract objects are the result of a linguistic uh, sense, and that linguistic sense comes from a, a sentient brain and, and mind, which in turn comes from an uh, evolutionary process which gets back ultimately to the quantum field. So it's long, certainly not a fundamental property of existence, abstract objects, but actually a long way derivative in there. I mean, that, that's a view. It's not everybody's view, it's your view, right? <laughs> you're asking about my view. Right? Yeah, you're right, exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly. exactly. I'm a strongly anti-Platonist in okay. mathematics. Okay. Um, okay, there is nothing wrong. That's uh, fine, that's fine. The, that's a very strong since we are, that's why I started from uh, the flexibility of the world, of the word, use of the word to exist. Yes. There's nothing wrong in sort of agreeing in our community to use exist in a different sense, right? Um, I suppose I'm interested in soccer, which I'm not, okay? There exist rules of, so of soccer, okay? So there's a set of rules, they exist, okay? They're there. They've been written in some, we can debate about them, we can change them, we can make them, and we talk about something existing the rules of how do you play soccer. But does this disturb me as a physicist that uh, there's a sort of wrong way between the rule of soccer and atoms and quarks? No. I mean, <laughs> we just but, but, agreed but, on these things and we use them and then we are bound to them, right? Uh, uh, laws, we are bound to laws, the constitution, ideas, liberty, freedom. Uh, we are bound to these things. They are no most important. Um, it's not deflationary in the sense that I take value away from that. <laughs> we use, we, we leave out of these things. Yeah. These are us yeah, yeah, profoundly. Yeah, right, right. But, but we, these are us. We made this. Yeah, but but it's way down the the chart of of causation. At least, if we have a flow of causation, how do you get there? It's there are innumerable steps to get there. Whereas when you start with quantum fields, there's no step. Maybe it's string theory, but there's basically it's there. Yeah, I, don't you want theory. I don't like string theory. Oh, you don't like string theory? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever is beneath it, quantum loop gravity. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what about something that is non-quantum fields? What, is some, what about things that are non-physical, at least in the term, whether they're spiritual or spheres of existence? Every religious organization, uh, religious uh, tenet uh, all over the world has millions of contradictory ideas, but they all have some sort of a, uh, a, an approach. Virtually every religion has something that is not definable, ultimately, with quantum fields. So, if so I think... Uh, do you give that a possibility? Could that be a category of existence? I think uh, human beings are free to, uh, in fact, they're free by their nature to uh, declare existing whatever they want. No, no, um, but that, that's so people can uh, say that the, the, the tree, tree is blue. I mean, it doesn't, I, mean, I don't care about that. I care about what's real, don't you? That's question. That point. I yeah. mean, real is not a I don't want to patronize people thing. by saying, if you want to believe it, go ahead and do it. But you're, you know, but think in my mind, you're, okay. an, you're an so, idiot. Not, not you, but somebody who thinks no, that. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So I think that uh, uh, reality is very complex. The nature is very complex, incredibly complex. We, we make a mistake when we think, oh, nature is just atoms, so it has to be mechanical, mm -hmm. stupid, trivial. No, I mean, nature makes plants, trees, and fantastic things, galaxies. Nature makes human beings, so it makes very complicated things. So um, one of the nature, natural objects that we are particularly interested in is ourself, of course. I mean, we are particularly complicated uh, natural objects, and uh, uh, we don't understand how we ourselves work to, to a large extent. So, but I see no evidence whatsoever that we're not part of nature. In fact, I think the beauty of what has been discovered uh, in the last century or centuries is that we are so much part of nature, right? We are, uh, all the studies of our brain, our physiology, is obviously, I mean, I mean, scientists have been searching for something which sort of break 
<laughs> the laws and make us different from something else. There isn't. So we are part of nature, and as part of nature, uh, we have a psychology, we have a sociology, we have emotions, we have uh, uh, beliefs, we have criticism. All this is part of nature. All this can be studied by science, science in principle. It might be hard, it might be complicated. So um, I think uh, things like religions are natural phenomena which have a history, uh, are historically uh, emerged at some point in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in the evolution of, of, uh, uh, of the humanity, and uh, are part of this large complexity. I think if we, if we could understand and study in depth, uh, I don't know, the world of bees, uh, we would find their rules, mm -hmm. their cred credences, whatever that means, the complicated things happening in the little brains, uh, and uh, uh, if we were too much focused on that, we would say, I mean, how could they be so far away from quarks and uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, and photons and electrons? So of course, they're far away because there's complexity. Complexity is uh, something we tend to forget all the time. That with few simple things, an incredibly richness of things can come out. We are an incredibly richness of things that may come out from very simple things. I don't see any reason for postulating something separate from this uh, complexity.